G'day everyone, my name is Chris from CSS. I just wanted to give you a quick overview of our product Storm Injector. The basic idea here is to help you apply R&R 2016 for a range of Australian rainfall runoff models. So the first step is downloading data from the ARR data hub and BOM sites. So as an example, we've got some uh, latitude and longitude and area entered in the download data panel here. The first step is to click one get data hub. This will fetch uh, the data from the ARNR data hub site. We can click ingest data to load that into our form. After this is done, you should be able to see that all the panels here are now populated with the exception of the rainfall depths. We've got uh, temporal patterns loaded, error reduction factor par parameters, uh, pre-burst depths, metadata, and interim climate change factors. So to get the final piece of the puzzle, the rainfall depths, we click button number two. If we give that a second to load, you should see the Bureau of Meteorology website. You can see that for the given latitude and longitude, we've loaded the rainfall depths. You can also see the non-standard durations have been automatically entered to match all the durations in the temporal patterns from the previous step. Again, clicking ingest data, we'll see this data loaded into the rainfall depths grid. The next step is to decide which events you'd like to analyze further. The selected events panel allows you to select any combination of AEP and frequent intermediate rare classification that you wish to analyze further. You can also use custom events, which we'll discuss a bit more at the end of the video. Once you've selected your events, the next step is to click three, create storms. This will populate the storms grid, which has a row for every storm that we will be modeling in our rainfall runoff model. Along the way to calculating that, it also calculates error reduction factors, storm burst losses, and suggested routing increments. Now, the warning that you saw was just letting us know that some of the burst losses have had to be interpolated. It's also worth pointing out here that the storm burst losses are based on settings from the settings tab where you can select how you'd like to calculate the initial loss and what you'd like to do with short duration storms. Now, let's hide the error reduction factors, storm burst losses, and routing increments grids and focus on the storms. So each row in this table is basically a separate storm that needs to be modeled and a separate model file for the rainfall runoff model will be created. The columns include the duration, time steps, classification, AEP, depth, the error reduction factor, net depth, average intensity, continuing and initial losses. And then we have all the increments for each time step in the model, which can be displayed based on percentages or depths based on the settings. The next step is to click for prepare model runs after selecting your rainfall runoff model of choice in the drop-down box. You'll be prompted to select a WBN file in the case of WBNM. And for this example, we're just gonna use one of the sample files distributed with the software. Basically, Storm Injector will overwrite the default storm that's in that file with the storm details from every row of the storms grid and create a separate file. These files are all listed on the Models Runs tab. You can see there's 240 separate files that have been created and now Storm Injector will help us to run them quickly. You can see down here, you can set a number of models to run simultaneously. You can also select whether you want the Windows 
to be hidden and then click number five run models uh, you can see the WBNM in particular is quite quick and it will quickly cycle through all the model runs until each model has been completed if you look on your computer you will see in a directory called WBNM files near the template file that you selected you'll find all the models and their output files in that directory. At this point, we're ready to process the results by clicking six process results. This will load the data into the right side of the form and it'll allow us to view the results. This particular project only has five subcatchments, but you can see them listed in the subcatchment results tab. It reports the average, median, and critical flows. It reports a critical temporal pattern. It also gives you a full list of all the flows and temporal patterns. You can select to display a particular duration or the critical durations. You can also refine your area of interest. If you're not interested in subcatchments one or two, you can remove them. Down the bottom, you can see an analysis of the temporal patterns. So it's telling us in 66% of cases for those three subcatchments of interest, the temporal pattern 4685 is critical and 4682 is critical in the other 33% of cases. There's also some other statistics here designed to tell you which temporal patterns might be the best ones to use in any subsequent hydraulic modeling. You can also do box charts for each subcatchment and the critical duration will be highlighted in yellow. You can also do charts of hydrographs for various subcatchments and durations. You can also turn on rainfall in the charts which can look a bit confusing when you've got a lot of different temporal patterns displayed, but if you turn a few off, it can give you a better idea of how the rainfall varies amongst different temporal patterns. So that's a quick overview of Storm Injector. This video was done in November 2017, so if you're watching it a long time after that, it's probably got quite a few new features, and I would encourage you to check it out on cssecomau website. If you've got time to stick around, I'm going to go into some of the settings and advanced features around custom events. Otherwise, um, I'll catch you next time. Okay, let's take a quick look at the settings tab. The first panel gives you some general options around how events are named, how to display rainfall increments in the storms grid, and whether you want to model very short duration events. The BOM website has rainfall depths for one to five minutes, but there are no temporal patterns on the AIR data hub page to deal with these durations. So if you check this box, you will see 100% of the rainfall being added for these very short duration events in a single time step in your model. The next panel shows how you want critical temporal patterns to be selected. Should it be the first exceeding the median, the first exceeding the mean, or the closest to the mean with a bias to those above the mean. The default factor here is two, which would mean a temporal pattern would need to be twice as close to the mean below the mean as above the mean before it would be selected as a critical temporal pattern. Uh, the next panel is initial and continuing loss, and it allows you to select how you want those initial burst losses to be calculated. In particular, for short Durations less than 60 minutes, how do you want to calculate your pre-burst? You can adopt zero, adopt the 60 minute pre-burst, or adopt some techniques from the literature, including Raman and Hill. You can also override pervious and impervious loss rates in this section. The final two sections in the setting tab are the paths to your rainfall runoff models. At the moment, we're supporting RAFs and WBNM, but we plan to add more in the near future. Okay, so one of the last things I wanted to show you was custom events.
So as we've discussed, the selected events panel allows you to select a combination of AEP and frequent intermediate rare, but what if you wanted to do a 20% rainfall increase scenario, or what if you wanted to do an interim climate change factor scenario? Well, that's where custom events can come in handy. There's some information on the help website, but if you put in a code like this, then you'll be doing a 20% increase. R inc stands for rainfall increase, then 1% AEP, 20% increase, and we're gonna use the rare temporal patterns. At this stage, if you recreate the storms, you will find that we have our normal 100 year events here, and then also down below, you can see we have our rainfall increase scenarios. And you can see here in the depth adjustment column, there's a 20% increase, percentage increase in the rainfall for this event. And then if you look at the actual rainfall depths, you'll see that compared to the same event, they have a 20% increase. If we remove that, another option here, instead of using a flat percentage increase, we can use one of these climate change factors. For example, the 18.6% increase associated in 2090 RCP 8.5. If we right click on that, create custom event, 1% rare, you'll see that a specific code gets added in there. Once you create the storms, you will again see those events have been added down below and you've got your 18.6% depth adjustment. You can add any number of custom events separated by commas and then compare them in the results section. Okay, that's all I wanted to uh, demonstrate to you today. Uh, please feel free to have a play with Storm Injector. It's currently in beta and will be in beta for at least four months. Do let us know of any issues you encounter or other features you require. All right, bye.